the network. And the final thing from Spotify is um, not only more, we've gone, we've gone through the news and the, and the features they're implementing, but I actually was reading an interesting opinion piece by a guy called Michael Donaldson, who's the founder of H Dimension Records. And he has said, is the title of the headline is, why a tip jar on Spotify is a bad idea. So this caught my interest because we've been talking about tipping a lot and how it's you know working well on Loom and why Spotify should potentially do it to help our eyes. But he makes a very strong argument for why this wouldn't work. Have you got any? Have you got any thoughts before we go into it? Like immediately, like, would you, do you think it's a bad idea on the face of it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my my thoughts honestly were around his, but yeah, tip tip like you know you think that tip jars at, at first it sounds good. Oh, more revenue for money. But it just doesn't work like that when it comes to the way it's set up for most artists, right? There, mm-hmm. There's the good and the bad. For the independent artists, yes, it could be a very good thing. But for the signed artists, there's a little bit of uh, mirrors because you're not tipping the artists themselves, right? Like this yeah. is, you're tipping and that artist won't see the tip for probably like two quarters from when you actually give them that 50 cents or five dollars and then that five dollars is actually going to be what is it 30 cent that spotify was going to take which is cool all right take yeah. your transaction fee or maybe or well that's if it was 30 percent that's way more than a regular transaction fee actually. i know yeah yeah Jeez. it's not confirmed uh, <laughs> i don't think i don't think the yeah. fee's confirned but it probably will be around that ballpark yeah, yeah that's that's, yeah. that's actually ridiculous now that i think about it that it's that much uh, particularly when they're already doing what they're what they're doing. For, YouTube for is worse. We're going to come on to that later, but YouTube is a lot worse. Yeah, this new know. this new feature. Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's payouts have never been as good as anybody else's. So I'm not we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, so you, one, yeah, you're going to split with Spotify. It's just like how it's going now, right? You take a stream, yep. and who does that money go to? Goes towards some towards Spotify in in, in some form of fashion, but then even more importantly, the breakdown of the, the major label, indie label, manager, like all those relationships, the artists only see the percent of a percent. So in terms of if I'm a fan and I want to tip an artist, and the reason I'm an intent I have by tipping that artist is far better for me to do either on a better platform like their TikTok page. Patreon. Or, or Loom or Patreon, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, TikTok takes, what, 50%. So yeah. like that or just some other individual platform or maybe just buy some daggone merch or something. But yeah, that doesn't, it, it's, 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 it sounds good because everybody's moving towards it, but it just doesn't have the same need that gets met when it comes to Spotify. I think they're better off not, I don't want to say they're better off not doing it. Um, because they are, gonna, they are looking at doing it. Daniel yeah. has said they are interested. Um, There's still been, indie yeah. artists that can benefit from it, though, right? Mm. Yeah, so it'll be beneficial from the indie artist standpoint, I think, because yeah, you're paying Spotify a thirty percent cut. Yeah, you could say it's better to do on the other on other platforms, but it's still using behavior. If I'm on Spotify, I might like Loom, I might not like TikTok, I might not want to go to your Patreon, right? So yeah. I'm already here, and even though it's seven dollars instead of ten dollars, or seven dollars versus nine dollars is still seven dollars that you might not have captured so i think they should have it but there's gonna have to be some kind of fan education piece that happens or maybe they i was gonna i was actually gonna say maybe they provide a breakdown of where the splits go for the artists right but then that would be revealing some stuff about artist deals that (laughs) a lot of people wouldn't went out there like oh you're Oh, uh, I don't know. Said artist only gets two percent of the money you spend. So I don't. You serve the indie well and the major artists well, depending or well signed artists well, and navigate all that at once. That's a it's a yeah. tricky. It's a tricky one. Well, I'll, I'll go through his arguments and make a few comments. So the first one is that the only way it would work if the payment goes directly to the artist, which we already mentioned, because a label distributor could be like a conduit, but. That won't eliminate the go-between. You, you want to cut out the middleman in a way. So, but who's going to be accountable if it's just going to be the artist? Because a lot of, you know, artists, you know, they don't, they're not responsible for running their own Spotify account. Obviously, for mm. the indie artists, it works <laughs> really well. But obviously, the labels are going to want to get a piece of the pie in these royalties. So therefore, that doesn't, it seems like a broken system already before it's even begun. 
Um, he said the concept wouldn't work unless Spotify came on board. And what's their incentive? What's their motive for doing it? Because it obviously takes money away from them. They can take a cut of it, but is there, there, is there really the, the amount of money it would cost to put the infrastructure in place and the time of testing it and stuff, would it really be worth it ultimately? Mm. Yeah. I think that um, spot, I don't, I don't think it'll be that well. Okay. To the labels and even the idea of streaming, right? Spotify shouldn't be using this as a substitute for their streaming, right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't say, hey, well, we're, we're, we're lowering our streaming fees at some point. I mean, streaming payouts at some point, but hey, look, we are, we're allowing you to do this direct to direct um, relationship, especially when we're getting 30% of that right off the top, right? So yeah. these things should continue to be separate for one, and then I don't understand how you keep the labels out of it in, in certain artist situations because the way some of these contracts are set up, whether it's the label or the manager or whoever, yeah, it's hard to cut out the middleman. That's, that's just the reality of a lot of contracts. I mean, again, when we're talking about a signed artist situation, you could call it a Patreon if you want to. The way some of these contracts are set up, they can take some of the money out of that Patreon account. Yeah, exactly. as well so yeah. It's, yeah it's that a situation is fishy so judge too completely off of that scenario i i can only say it would be a positive for an independent artist so more than anything hey artists who are independent all right consider being independent or consider staying independent because a lot of the benefits that are coming through these technologies are building a, a better world tomorrow for independent artists and there's so many of those technologies and opportunities coming you just have to be positioned to succeed as an in independent artist in that that um climate right now a lot of artists either they aren't positioned because they're not handling their self you know understanding their marketing all those types of situations or there's other people who you know they have the fan base and they have everything except for freedom all right and they also won't be able to benefit as well. It'll be like that kid who's watching all the other kids play outside, but they're in time. Out. Mm. The other thing it says on here, some other very fair arguments. And um, the point he makes is about um, by claiming that in a way, this sort of indicates that because Spotify's royalties are so low, it kind of suggests that, you know, I should live off tips, which is obviously a, a big problem in the States, particularly like the ethical problems with that. Like, should they really be, you know, having to rely on that? for income, especially at an independent level. So it's a bad precedent. Artists should live off of tips. Oh, not at all. Exactly. Like no, that's, that, and that's what's encouraging, yeah, he reckons, yeah. in a way. That's, that's why I said those have to stay completely separate. Those are mm. two completely things. Because there's a lot of artists that don't have the fan base psychograph, right? So you, their money, they're better off getting streams than any kind of tips from their fans because their yeah. fans just aren't going to give that kind of money or they don't have that kind of money. Most of my fans are, you know, maybe 15 year olds in a underserved environment, right? It, it doesn't make sense for most people. So, well, not most people. It doesn't make sense for a lot of people and we can't put the blanket over every artist situation. There's too many different types of fan bases, styles of music, and things of that nature. Something like, well, there's a few genres that, are better, that could perform well and artists that I definitely think can perform well, but that's a whole nother conversation. This is, this is the danger we've been talking about before, like why is the tipping culture in the West not been so prominent on, you know, on social media and on these music streaming platforms, that's where it is so elsewhere. If, but the problem is that, if we thoughts start, on that, well, if we start going down that rabbit hole of, you know, increasing these tips, the companies are going to start thinking, well, actually, they're making money. A lot of artists are making money from this. Therefore, we should, you know, let's save some money here and not pay out as much because they're making money This is elsewhere. exactly how people, like, this already exists. Yeah. I know a lot of cultures don't necessarily have, like, the tipping culture, right? But in America, right, where the tipping culture is, 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 um, it's, a tr it's a real thing. There's the waiters who get paid off of tips. Mm -hmm. They get paid pretty much no money, right? It's like, hey, we're not really paying you that much hourly. We might pay you $2.30 yeah, exactly. an hour. 
because you should be getting a lot of money off of tips and you got to make all that up there. And then obviously there's other jobs that, Hey, it's not tips. So we'll pay you more and you have this consistent thing and you don't have to worry about these ebbs and flows of business and the timing. It, it that's definitely going to be the thought process of a lot of people yeah. said or unsaid is going to happen. There's a classic case where, you know, the top 1% or 10% is making a lot of money. So they're thinking, oh, these guys are making loads. Everyone's making loads. That's not the reality. Yeah. And that's the way they think. Yeah. It's like the point is, tip, like this tip is for me to get more of what I deserve, not to mm-hmm. replace the little of what I deserve that you're already giving me. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not, oh, yeah, okay. I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm barely getting what I deserve here, this is another stream of income to help me as an artist be able to live get the value from my fan base that's already being messed with in so many ways and it's difficult to connect with. I built this. This is more. This is not supposed to be a replacement for the issues that you already had and now hey no you're it's the network. Ow.